out now, whether for your own benefit so that you can confirm identifications, or as a teacher, you have to have precise language when you're helping people identify something. That's obvious, right? And, and um, for you, it's totally appropriate that you go, I don't know why it is what it is. I just know that's what it looks like. I know what Mike looks like, whether or not I can describe him accurately to somebody or not. And that's completely valid for you. <coughs> but to pass that through the generations, not so much. So let's work on that a little bit. So when you, when you see this plant, first of all, it's totally true that this plant, all of this is it. Can you guys see that? It is, in fact, it would be described as a vine. A vine is an herbaceous plant that doesn't hold itself up. It climbs on other vegetation or trails over the ground. Okay, now the test. Is a grape a vine? I know the answer. Exactly. I said a vine is an herbaceous plant, not a woody plant. Right? And a grape has this, particularly as they get old, I mean, it has bark, it produces secondary growth, it gets, in other words, the diameter gets thicker every year, there are growth rings that can be observed, so they're not vines, they're something else, they're called lianas. A liana is a woody vine, if you will. So this one, not, not woody in the way that we would think of its relatives, like raspberry and blackberry. Okay, great. Now, another thing that we need to know about when we look at these things is we need to know whether these have simple or compound leaves. It's super important because I heard somebody say it has three leaves, but I see, I see, are those leaves, are those leaflets, like you've got to know where a leaf begins and where it ends. And if you guys take a look, I'm going to try to get everything out of the way so you can see it. Almost got it, guys. Right there. Can you see there are this pair of little tiny, they were green, they're obviously now starting to get yellow, this little tiny <coughs> pair of appendages right there. They're leaf-like, in other words, they're just looking like really tiny leaves. Those are called stipules, and they're actually part of the leaf. And everything from those stipules out is one leaf. So these three divisions then get called something diminutive, like they're a second order division, and these get called leaflets. So this plant, Rubus pubescens, <coughs> has compound leaves that are made up of three leaflets. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. oh, I'll get to this in a second as we go through. Um, and, and if you look, you'll notice that the two lateral leaflets are always asymmetrical. See how they're bulged on the base? If you cut them in half, they don't create mirror images, right? Mm -hmm. Some plants do. They have symmetrical leaflets. This one does not, not the lateral ones. But the terminal leaflet or the central leaflet, you can use whatever name you want here, that one is symmetrical. Okay. Um, what about when we think of this genus, Rubus, blackberries, raspberries, we think of armature, right? Mm -hmm. We think of things that make us not want to wade into it and pick. How about with this plant? There's so nothing, right? So this is actually really important. Once you learn that it's a rubus, in this case, you know, uh, this raspberry relative, the fact that it lacks prickles is a pretty big deal because it helps us separate it from all the others. Those of you who have seen the fruit, you know that it's a, a really bright red fruit that tastes reminiscent of a raspberry. It's close, not exactly. Uh, yeah, but anyways, all I'm trying to do is, is show you how we tighten up the terminology just a little bit without going into any ridiculousness. Not too much. We want to do a little bit, but not too much. Um, so that you can convey this is why that plant is what it is.